We are live. Hey. Hello, good, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining class. Um, so this is pattern drafting for uh, 14th century kirtle, uh, also commonly referred to as a Gothic fitted dress or a GFD. I also refer to it as a uh, self-supporting kirtle. Um, the idea being that this is a dress that is going to support um, the, the breast for a woman. Um, it, there, are, there are many different ways in which uh, uh, that was supported in the period. Um, this is one of those. Uh, this is a dress that is intended to be um, a second skin e effectively. Um, this is going to give you all the support you need uh, at the skin layer. Um, th there would be a, um, a lighter chemise, um, lighter linen chemise underneath this as well. Um, but this is the, the part that, that provides the, the support. Um, <clears throat> and then when you do, uh, you put a code RD over the top of this. Um, so that would be a second, uh, a second layer, or actually a third layer, um, very much like, um, uh, like an, an evening dress uh, sort of thing. So um, this is the type of outfit that uh, the kirtle the could be worn. Um, that, that's an everyday wear sort of thing. The code RD that goes over the top of it would be, um, uh, would, would be more for, for court uh, settings. Um, <clears throat> so a lot of the uh, a lot of the information that I use uh, for this um, comes from uh, the Museum of London series uh, textiles and clothing. Um, and, um, I also use uh, fashion in the in the age of the black prints. Um, and the the greater provenance for this particular uh, dress, I'm going to share my screen real quick if I'm allowed to. Marguerite, can you let me share my screen there? Okay. Pretty please? Pretty, pretty, pretty please? Yep, sorry. <laughs> Is this the host disabled? You should be able to do it now. Okay, let me try again. Hey, there we go. Uh, let me get this. There we go. No, go back up. Stupid screen. <clears throat> so this is uh, basically where this dress comes from. This is the uh, golden gown of Queen Marguerite. Um, uh, she, as it says here, she died uh, in 1412. Uh, so this would, um, this would have been right in the, the 14th century. Um, this dress is, um, so this was made for her coronation. Um, and I, I haven't read through this particular uh, I, I haven't read through this particular um, page on this, but um, so this gown is is currently housed in the Uppsala uh, Cathedral in Sweden, and so this is uh, this is basically what it what it looks like. Um, <clears throat> it's important to note though that this was a dress that was made when before her coronation when she was like ten years old. Um, so you can see by the sketches they have there, um, this would be the the front, um, you know, left and right. And then the back, or yeah, the back left and right as well. Uh, and this is kind of a sketch of the of the the front of it here. So this is where we get the idea for the four panel um, dress. And again, because she was this was, she was like ten years old. Um, a lot of the dresses for adults, um, you know, we have other context and um, like woven in, into the earth. Um, we have the Haralfnes uh, digs that have multiple panel uh, kirtles uh, just like this. Um, but for the purpose of what we're doing, I definitely prefer the, the four panel dress because I'm really not interested in doing 10 panels for, for one dress. It's a lot of work as it is. So this is the general idea of, of the, the gown that we're looking at <clears throat> and, and where that comes from. Um, so I had, I'm gonna stop sharing that. So earlier in this week, I had uh, done a video on the the fitting of this. Uh, put it put it on my wife, um, and you know pinned it up, and drew all the lines. So if you haven't had a chance to watch that, I definitely recommend doing that. Hopefully, you've had a chance to to watch that throughout this week. Um, I will probably end up doing a class on that later. Um, but for what this is, I just wanted to be able to to get that out uh, to have uh, context. Um, after this, probably in the next couple of weeks. Um, I plan on doing another class on laying out the dress with the fabric. 
and um, how I cut that out. There's some kind of specific things that I, that I do when I'm when I'm laying it out and cutting it out to, to give you an idea about how it goes together. So I'll probably be doing a class on that as well. Um, but this part today is going to be on the, the pattern drafting. So it's going to be from the body block to a full pattern, including including this sleeve pattern. Um, if at any time anybody has any questions uh, on anything, just have uh, just you can use the raise hand uh, thing in the Zoom there to let uh, Marguerite know, and she can uh, she can let me know if you have any questions. So um, so um, man, I got my camera here. Not sure how good you can see the lines on these. Okay, so. <clears throat> for instance, these are, now I'm waiting for focus, 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 okay, so this is the uh, front piece, man, that's terrible, Monty. is that better, okay, so this is the front piece, um, and this is the, uh, the lines that I had um, uh, sharpened up after doing the initial draft, um, taking it off the body, so that's the, we've got the left and the and the right front pieces. Uh, likewise, I got the two back pieces. You can see at this point, it's still um, it's still the full body block um, that I that I'd used. I haven't cut anything out just yet, so sorry. I'm trying to check out the lighting and everything too. Um, so anyway, now what we're gonna do is um, I'm gonna be Still trying to find the best angle for this camera here. I hope it might work. Let's see. There you go. Um, I know it's kind of hard to see the lighting that's kind of terrible on this. Um, but one of the things I'm going to do first here is I'm going to take one side. So we have to take the front and the back, and we're going to make a composite off of the two sides. Because when we started, when we drew the lines on there, we get it kind of close, and it looks like what generally what it should be. And and this, um, as I as I drew the the dress on, and again, one of the things I love about doing this patterning method is when I do the body fitting and it's on her, um, I can literally draw the dress directly on her. So I can make the the neckline as deep as they want to go. I can make the arms I, whatever size I, I want to make that as well. And if I don't like it, I just erase the lines and then and I draw it on and, and we have a look in the mirror and and like whatever you see on the 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 body block, when I get it done drawing on it, that's what the dress is going to look like. And uh, we're going to add seam allowance to that later to to, to get it what we need. Um, but that's what the dress is going to look like, and that's one of the things I really, really love about about doing this. But because we put it on the body, <clears throat> and bodies are not symmetrical, um, ultimately we're going to have one front uh, pattern and one back pattern. So they're all going to be it's all going to be the same. We're, we don't make you know a left and a right and a front and a back. We just make the two the two pieces and then the sleeve piece. Um, so we need to make a composite of the two that we have. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna take and, I'm gonna use my chalk pencil on one of these to just make these lines a, a bit darker. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay this one down on top of the other one, and then I'm gonna rub off the chalk marks, and that, is going to uh, basically give me a, a, a transfer just like as if I was using um, copy paper. Now I used to insist on using white linen because um, when I do this transfer, you know, I used to do this thing where I'd kind of lay them down one on the top of the other and try to draw the lines um, from what I saw through the, the linen. But uh, after I discovered this transfer method here, I'm like, that is just brilliant. So I'm just going to do that. So I don't know if, how many of the other uh, tailors on the me on the class here have done exactly this. I can't be the first person to come up with this. Okay. 
darkened up this one. I'm gonna lay these two pieces down, and, and as I do this, I'm laying them down so that they are, um, so that they, they match each other at this point. I'm not worried about them matching the chalk lines underneath, because the whole point of this is we need to, we need to know what it is, not what we want it to be. So laying those down, um, I'm just gonna kinda use my fingers. Rub out the chalk line. I'm gonna pull this up and you know, that bottom line is way off. So, I know this is gonna be really, really hard to see. However, most of it's pretty close. Um, this, uh, the, the really faded line here is from the, from the top pattern, as well as this faded line here. So down here on the bottom, uh, where the pattern is gonna be, hit the natural waist, um, I ended up going a little bit too high on the one side. So this, this side is a little bit lower. Um, the arm's eye here is just a touch lower there. Um, and the neckline is just a, a, a touch lower here. The top part of this, the, the shoulder is, is pretty close. Um, so I don't know, Marguerite, can you see, uh, how well can you see that? Is it, is this coming across? I can see it okay. Can you, can you bring it a little more of a top down or? Top that down. Too. This way? Yeah, I can see kind of the bottom part of it there. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, so that's, you know, that's the bottom. You mean there? Yeah, I can at least see it okay. All right. It's kind of hard to tell one with my screen and everything here. So, so what I'm going to do is uh, now I'm going to composite this. So I'm just going to kind of split the difference on some of these uh, some of these seams. Um, the the sh the like I said, the top shoulder up here. I don't know if you can see these lines. These lines kind of come in here just a little bit. And one of the things that we need to make sure that we do when we're, we're drafting the pattern is um, this measurement across the top has to match that same measurement, that shoulder seam on the, on the back side. Likewise, the, the side seam here needs to be the same length as the side seam uh, on the other one. Um, those are the only, really the only ones that, that matter because the rest of these seams are going to be matched with its its own uh, half. So this this front seam here obviously is just going to be matched to the to the to the front of the, the dress on the other side there. So the shoulder needs to be the same. So we need to know how much how big those are. And generally the uh, yeah. So this this shoulder seam is really, it's, it's pretty narrow to begin with. Um, so I've got roughly two inches, maybe two and a quarter inches on that. So I'm gonna wanna make sure that that is um, the same on the back side. Um, so some of the, some of the tools that, that, that I use, um, I showed this in the video originally. This is the, um, the quilter's pen, chalk pen, um, or pencil, I guess got a retractable um, chalk in it. Uh, these are available at, at Joann's um, in the quilting section. Um, these are really, really handy. This is definitely my preferred um, tool for drawing. Um, for doing the, um, the seam allowance later, uh, I've got a seam gauge. Um, I'll be getting to that uh, in just a little bit too. But one of the neat, really neat tools that I picked up recently is this little guy. So this is a flexible, uh, ruler for curves, which will definitely come in handy when I do the sleeve head later. But what I can do is I can I can just kind of line this up on this uh, curve on the side seam here, and I get four and a half inches on that. So whatever we end up on the other side for the back piece needs to be four and a half inches right there as well. So. I'm just gonna throw it out there while I'm kind of doing a composite. If there's any questions out there, feel free to, to let me know.
And some of this, as I'm cleaning up these lines on the composite, um, like I said, I'm gonna kind of split the difference on them and darken up the lines. And this is also the opportunity that I have to, um, to kind of finish the look of it, if you will. Um, so that I can, again, when, when I finish this drawing, this is going to be what the finished dress is going to look like. So, you know, if I want to, God damn it, I keep breaking lead here. Um, so yeah, if I want to, if I want a steeper curve or if I want a more narrow curve, um, this is the, the time to do that. So one of the things that they consider with this as well is the, the narrow uh, shoulder at the top there is kind of a product of the fact that the sleeve on this, the arms eye and the, the sleeve on this is kind of inset into the shoulder cap a little bit. So um, rather than uh, rather than just going to the point, of, rather than going to the point of the shoulder. This. So instead of measuring here at the end of the shoulder, the sleeve is actually going to kind of go up over. It's going to kind of cap over the sleeve so that it actually follows this in, inside curve right here. Is that all right? Um, do we sit for a minute? I guess, yeah. Hey, look, everybody, we have a packet. Oh, they can't see her. Him. Look, everybody, we have a packet. So sweet. What are we doing? You're babysitting while I go get Clinton. Uh, okay. He's not doing so good, and I don't. I know. did just uh, have a question in chat. Um, okay. What is the material you're using to make the pattern? Um, when I when I cut the actual, so this is linen uh, that I use to do the the body block with. Um, the uh, the um, the pattern can be just whatever whatever material you have on hand or you prefer for, for patterning. Um, I have a kind of a heavier cotton that I, that I just have a, a roll of that I've been using for years um, that I just, I, I've got plenty of it. Um, and, and that's what I use. Um, I'll, I'll be showing you that a little bit later. Um, but the, the body block itself that we do the fitting with is linen um, because nothing moves the way that linen moves. Um, and typically this is going to be um, the dress itself, the, the under layer is, is often going to be linen because um, again that's that's what has the flexibility to give you the support that it needs whereas if you're doing it in silk or wool for that skin layer you can do it depending on the depending on the thickness and the weight of the the, of the wool um, but I just find that uh, linen works better for um, for the uh, for the kirtle. All right. So we had a little bit lower line on this bottom edge. So I'm gonna kind of again split the difference there. And I'm gonna finish running that line down. And so that's actually gonna be a little bit longer than the four and a half that we had before. Um, so now, you know, I don't know how well you can be able to see this. So this bottom line here, you can kind of see this is where the original line was on the, on the one half, and that's the line from the other one. So I extended the side down just a little bit. I've probably got six, maybe seven inches there. Um, and then I uh, kind of straighten that out right there. Got this curved line here, which is your bust line. All right, everybody. Um, and then I uh, got the sleeves up here. So, all right, everybody. Hang on a second. Sorry, I'm babysitting baby alpaca. Okay. Um, so I think for the most part. That's going to be what I want for the front. I'm pretty happy with uh, with the lines we had on that. 
and uh, they're pretty happy with that. And so I'll cut that out later. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and move on to the back to do the same thing. You gotta keep your fronts and your back straight. Your brace. Yes, ma'am. We just want you to know that if you need to go, we all completely understand and we get it. And we could all meet for this class at a different time if we have to. Okay, I appreciate that. We're gonna try to do what we can, get done what we can here. Um, we have got, uh, like I said, baby born alpaca and then the wife had to go pick up uh, pick up Quentin, so. So, and like I said, uh, alpaca twins are very rare. Right, and we're just saying we get it, and if you need to go, we gotcha. All right, I appreciate that. I'm gonna see what I can, and see what I can get done here, but yeah, I may have to bail at a moment's notice, but I definitely appreciate that. Hey, while I'm sharpening up these lines a little bit to do this transfer, uh, I'll share with you that uh, the irony of me teaching a class on 14th century curdles today is that this happens to be the 33rd anniversary of my knighting. Congratulations. Thanks. So what better way to spend the celebration of my knighting than doing a sewing class, right? Because as my knight mentioned, when I was a young squire, knights sew, that's the deal. A man of many hats. All right, so I managed to get uh, the shoulder seam up here, I managed to get it about the same width I had on there, so just to about two and a quarter, two and some change, so I'm pretty happy with that. Six there. And then it was here. Okay, so on the side seam on the back there, I've got six inches, and on the front side, I've got about five and three quarters. So I will be able to trim a little bit off of that on the on the bottom. And that'll be final. I'll fix that in just a second. I probably should have done the other one because I like this line better. So as I'm looking at these, the the two, the front and the back here, the uh, the arms I have on the back piece, um, one is much more pronounced than the other. Um, so it, it's just got a better a better curve to it. Um, so I probably would have wanted to use that as the the primary and transfer the other one over the top, but our good lines on there, so we will make it all work. Ooh, hey. That's way off. So as I'm, <laughs> one of the things about using the white linen is I can kind of see how far off these are. And uh, yeah, this is gonna be interesting. So I'm probably gonna have to do some pretty creative work on, on this one because it is, Where's it off by quite a bit? I can tell already.
Okay. So, so on this one, um, so this is the transfer line that I made right here. And you can see that's a pretty huge gap. I'll take the camera off and see if I can get better. Okay. Yeah. I'm making you all dizzy with the camera work. Um, so you can see this is the transfer line that I had there and that's the other line I have there. So that's a pretty huge gap. Um, but I also have this right here. This is the part that concerns me more. We've got the neckline here is okay, but this, um, this is where the shoulder seam ended up here. Um, and so that's a pretty good, pretty good gap between the, the, the two right there. So I'm not really happy with that. These are not too bad. Um, I'm probably just gonna kind of cut this. So again, I, I just have that six inches that I need uh, to do there. Um, but yeah, this is gonna take some, a uh, little bit of creative composite uh, to get this. But again, the one thing I'm gonna wanna make sure when I do this is that this is gonna be two and a quarter inches, just like the, the front piece there. So yeah, it's really hard to tell how much you can see and how much you can the best we can here. Okay. This is the kind of boring part. We have this point here, I'm trying to, and again, this is, this is the part of the pattern drafting where when it, when it is this far off, um, you know, you gotta kinda make some things work. And again, this is exactly why we do the composite off of this. Um, where you just kind of take the best of the two pattern pieces that you have and uh, hope for the best. Ooh. Yeah, so this one here on the arm's eye, I'm just, I'm going right down the middle of this. That's better. So if they were so off, would you just remeasure or and try again or just try to make them match the best you can and go forward? And if they don't work out, just try again with a new piece? Um, I would, yeah, I, I prefer what I'm doing. Cause like I said, there's from where, from the two arms eye measurements. Uh, Cause again, when I draw it on the dress, I'm drawing the, the one side of the arm and then I do the other side of the arm and, and it, it can come off uh, this much, but there's a, there's a two inch difference in the, in, at the center point of this arm's eye from the, from the under bust on the side to the shoulder, that's a two inch difference. Um, and it's, I, I would much rather fix it here as I've done. And I'll show you what I did with that in just a second uh, because putting it on her and fitting again. Um, you know, I was able to cut that down to about 38 minutes worth of video. Um, but that was, that was more like two hours, um, worth of, of fitting, uh, with, with the recording and everything. Uh, the best time I've ever had on one of these, 
It was the one I did for Mistress Bree um, in the Outlands. Um, I had a body block ready to go. As soon as she came in the house, um, I had a full pattern in about three hours. Um, but it can, it, it takes, it takes some time. So I'd rather fix it here um, than, than to, uh, than to redo this part of it. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Thank you. So again, on the uh, front piece there, I had on the side seam, I have, this is where the curved ruler definitely can, helps. Yeah, so I'm right at six inches on the, on the side seam. So I'm extending this one out just a little bit. And, whew, quite a bit. And uh, you may have seen in the video too, when I do the fitting on these, I typically fit down past the, um, past the natural waist into the hip area. Um, just because that gives me more room to work um, with, um, you know, because if I was trying, if I was trying to fit it just right to the natural waist, it's just not going to lay quite the the quite the same way. Um, so, so yeah, I, I do it a little bit lower, but the pattern itself ends up being just right at the right at the natural waist. Um, because that's the point where, um, you know, again, thing about this dress, it's designed to show off the things you want to show off and to hide the stuff that you want to hide. Um, so we we put it we put the pattern down to the natural waist, and when we do the the dress itself, the the when we do the underlayer kirtle, not the coat but the kirtle. Um, it's going to have a, a second layer of this. So there's, there's, a, there's a lining that is just, um, just down to the waist again, because again, that's, that's the part that needs to be supported is up, you know, just right through the breast. Um, so we, we put that, that lining in um, to, to give that extra support, but it doesn't go all the way down um, to, the, to the floor. Um, and then w with the, we don't do that with the code RD because the code RD is going to be floor length all the way. And it's, and the code RD just, um, your, the kernel already gives you the support. So the code RD goes on, on over the top of it. So you don't need as much support in that layer. Why does that seem good? Okay. And again, on the, the back side here, we just need the side seam and the shoulder to match. We don't need to, we don't necessarily need to have the front or the, 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 the back piece doesn't need to match the front uh, and the back seam that goes right down your spine doesn't need to match the front of the dress. Um, again with the composite. And this is one where I, I pretty much like the line on the back that I had. Um, there is going to be a slight curve on the back here as well because there's the, it, it, it closes up somewhat in, in between the shoulder blades and in between the, um, at the small of the back. And all right, right there, buddy. Okay, so. One of the things I'm going to do here as well is I'm going to take the, the front piece that I had there and kind of fold it right at that line and they match. So we're good there. 
and we can do the same on the side seam a little bit. And they might have a slightly different curve, but they're the same length. And actually the curve is going to be pretty close because uh, that ended up going right at the, uh, the seam that I used um, with the, the half inch seam allowance to do the body block in the first place. So, I'm going to pull the camera off and see if you can see this okay. Okay, so this was the, uh, the top line that I had from the one piece before. Uh, it's really hard to see, but the other one was kind of down here a little bit. So I, I took a measurement off of the neckline right there and uh, kind of cut out somewhere in between the, the two, made this the length that I need to match the, the, the front seam. Uh, you can see this is this is the original line for the for the for the top composite there. This is the original line for this piece that was there, and so that's the line that I made to kind of split the difference. I might kind of round that out a little bit to uh, to kind of just smooth that out a little bit. Um, likewise, I know um, I know I'm going in different directions with the camera here, but um, so this was the original line for this for this uh, this piece. Um, the this is the original line down here from the top piece. So I just kind of split the difference on those. Brought this down so that it was um, so that the side seam is six inches to match uh, the side seam over there. So uh, like I said I'm I'm just going to kind of round that out just a little bit more because I'm not really not really happy with how sketchy that is, um, but otherwise, we're getting uh, getting pretty close. To what we need to do here. Oh, I like that much better. And keep in mind too, we're, we're you know at this point with the arms eye and all these other, um, I'm not worried about measurements on these because I know when I fit it on her and I drew it on her, I knew that these I know that these lines will fit, right? Because that's the way we we're able to draw it on there. I'm not worried about measurements on these, especially on the arms eye because it, it is what it is, and the only measurements I'll be concerned about later it comes in doing the, the drafting for the sleeve pattern. And the way I do that is pretty slick, so that's probably the part you're going to be interested in seeing. Um, but yeah, I think at this point I like what I've got for the front and the backs. Okay. And <clears throat> one thing about this, uh, for whoever is asking about, you know, if you make a mistake, do you redo it? I'm going to keep the other two halves as is. Um, so these are the ones that I made a composite out of. I'm going to cut these out, um, but I'm not going to cut the other ones. So if I do have to go back, if it just if it just is a train wreck, if I really need to, I can go back and I can try uh, making a pattern for those. So without further ado, everybody's favorite part, actual cutting of the fabric and hoping you got it right. Again, this is the really boring part. So, 
Always, I'm open for questions uh, while I'm cutting these out. Uh, yes, ma'am. This is Courtland. Yes. Um, question, can you explain why all these steps are so important? Um, I mean, I guess the easy answer is so that it fits. Um, so, the, you know, the putting the body block on and, and, and pinning it on somebody, I, I don't want to say that it's, that it's easy, but it's, um, you know, that's, that's the part where you get a, you know, you get a, I mean, if, if it was so easy as, as to, you know, just pin a dress on somebody every day, uh, then that would just, uh, that'd, that'd be just simple, right? Um, so, but once we put that on, um, you know, once we get that pinned on, you know, that's, that's the shape of their body, right? And, and that's how we get this to be like glove tight. It's not sausage tight, but it is second skin. Right, it's it's supportive, um, and but again, because the because the body is not symmetrical, uh, anybody, and you know, as we as we do these these composites, we're we're trying to make it so that we are dealing with one pattern piece as opposed to four pattern piece or one front one one back as opposed to two of each, and and hoping that the two patterns that you, that you made on there. Are, are are symmetrical right i mean that's that it's that just seems like a lot of work to me um when we can just lay it out in one and and just go so having the you know doing the composite between the two gives you because uh, there's there's going to be errors in in how you draw the dress on um you know without taking exact measurements you know this isn't like modern tailoring where you take all the measurements off of somebody and just make, you know, make a, a suit from uh, strictly from the measurements. Um, we're we're making this pattern based on what their body is, um, not what their measurements are. And making that 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 composite. Oops. Gives you the, the two pieces to work with, and it's going to be even though the body is asymmetrical, it's going to be close enough. Um, so, yeah, the, again, the, having that shoulder seam, um, the same width as the back seam, obviously that's important, um, because if, if they're not the same, and I pretty much nailed that, um, let me give you an idea about what this looks like top down. That is the shoulder seam. This is the back neckline. Curves down into the front neckline. This is the arm's eye. And that is going to match up there. Looks like I might be a little long on the bottom there. And see, I got a pretty good match right there. I can actually, actually, I'm going to leave that because I can probably. There, ta! -da, suddenly, they're the same length. <clears throat> um. So yeah, that's kind of what it's. Uh, that's the front and back together. It's kind of what it's. Uh, what's going to look like? Does that answer your question, there, Your Grace? It does, thank you. Okay. So, what are we going to pick up? About what I figured. Okay, so front piece, back piece. Um, and again, this is what it's going to look like when it's on. Now we, uh, now we start adding seam allowance. So, um, and you can see as well, so this arm's eye here, as, as big as that is, and, and as narrow as this is the shoulder, and it seems pretty narrow right here at the neckline as well. This, the sleeve head is gonna go into there. It's gonna be inset into this. Um, likewise over here um, on, the, on the backside. Again, I'm not worried about this being 
smaller than than this one. So in this one, the, the front here happens to be a little bit a little bit bigger across there. Um, your um, your your front the front side of your shoulder isn't going to be the same as your as your back. You just need to make sure that the sides match. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. So um, let me get. Um, your Grace, this yes, is this is Samad. Um, what type of seams are you going to be using on this? What do you mean? Um, I mean, are you gonna when you're when you're putting it together? Will you um start with like a basting stitch, or are you gonna end up doing like the flat felled, or what type of seam will? Uh, so it, uh, yeah. it depends on the on the type of fabric that you're using to make the dress. For the most part, unless I'm doing something for like top end competition, most of it's going to be uh, machine construction with uh, hand hand finished uh, seams. If I'm doing linen, um, uh, linen has to be finished somehow on the edges, or it will just shred out. Um, so, and it depends on it. It kind of depends on how much work I want to do on it. If I'm if I if I if I want to show the inside seams, then I'm going to do the flat felled seam with the linen. Um, if I'm not too concerned about showing those seams, I may just rip it on a serger. Um, especially if I'm doing a mock up for the first time I've made a dress for somebody. Hang on a second, I got it an escapee. Um, if it's the first time I'm making a dress for somebody, I don't want to do flat felled seams on a dress that I don't know is going to work. So I always try to do a mock up. Um, usually like a, well, I prefer to do a mock-up in like a cotton or something like that to, to make sure the fit is close. Um, but then I'll do a prototype in addition to that out of linen, um, to make sure that everything is, is right before I start, you know, before I put that kind of time into, um, uh, finishing something like that. Um, yeah, I may do, I may do surgery seams on that. In the, um, textiles and clothing. Um, and I don't know what page it's on. I could probably find out for you, but they definitely mentioned in textiles and clothing that with um, with certain types of wool, the seams weren't really finished at all um, because the felting on on the edges of the the wool uh, make it so you don't really have to finish the seams in the same way that you do with the with linen. Um, they may still do a um, kind of like a butterfly uh, stitch. Um, you know, where, where you'll do, you know, you'll do a construction seam and then you'll, you'll kind of butterfly open the, the wool and you'll tack that down on either side. Um, they may do that just to kind of flatten it out and, and to uh, uh, make it lay a little bit smoother. Um, but there is, is definitely evidence to suggest that, that they really didn't finish um, the wool at all. Uh, but again, it depends on the, the type of wool you're using. Um, so otherwise, if I'm doing hand sewn construction on this, I prefer to do a I prefer to do a back stitch um, as opposed to a running stitch. Um, running stitch um, to me, when I was doing it on the Boxtons, um, the running stitch always ended up with this kind of bacony ripple sort of uh, thing on the on the seams, and I just like the I like the strength of the the back stitch better. Um, so and I, it takes a little. It doesn't take that much more time. It might take a little bit more thread, but I just like the construction of it better. Um, so, but yeah, depending on the the fabric that I'm using, um, I will do uh, either serger or flat felt seams or butterflies. Great, thank you. Okay, so um, when we're doing this, uh, we need to do. So when we do the sleeve measurement and we do the sleeve pattern, the sleeve pattern is going to be based on the sleeve head, including, or the arm's eye, including uh, seam allowance. So we have to fully complete the pattern for, um, for, the, for both parts of the body. And then we take a measurement on the arm's eye off of that to give us the, um, the, the measurement of the sleeve head. So we don't, at the sleeve head, we don't build in more 
um, more seam allowance because uh, it's already built into built into this. Um, so that's one of the things about this method is got to finish the body completely first and make a full pattern off of it, and then you make the sleeve pattern after that. Uh, so I really can't get started on the sleeve pattern until that's done. So typically I use half inch seam allowance for most of what I do, but for this particular method, because the kirtle is, is that skin layer effectively, um, and we, we need to allow room for the code RD to go over the top of that. So the code RD is gonna have a little bit more give in it because it's going over another layer and it doesn't have to provide the same kind of support that the kirtle does. So when I do the pattern on this, I will do seam allowance at 5 eighths of an inch. Sorry, half, 5 eighths. So I'll do, the, I'll do the seam allowance at 5 eighths of an inch. And when we make the kirtle, I use all of that 5 eighths. If you're doing um, if you're doing flat felt seams, that definitely gives you a little bit of room to to work with um, to to cut those down uh, to to feld those. Um, but I use the full five eighths for the kirtle, and then I use a half inch for uh, for the code RD. So I can get both of these off of one pattern without having to uh, without having to add uh, uh, extra seam allowance later to account for uh, for the code RD, um, if that makes sense. Um, so I'm going to use the same gauge here, and I've got it set at, at five eighths of an inch. Um, and typically, what I like to do is um, so I've got these laid out on top of the, the, the patterning fabric that I'm going to use, and what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to leave, leave, leave it as is, and I'm going to I'm going to make these measurements off the pattern piece itself, as opposed to tracing it out. Um, so typically, what I like to do is to get to the corners first and get all the the straight edges as much as I can, um, mark those out, and and then we'll we'll kind of guide from there. So I'm going to hit the corners here. And so where I've got these two marks, that's right at where that corner is. I'm going to slide this over just a little bit to finish extending that out. I'll slide this one up off of the edge of it as well, kind of in line. Get that as well. So just made that corner right there. I don't know if you can see that. You see that? So I'm basically going to do that with all the all the corners first so that I can match up this line to get the right angle that I need on it. And by the way, to further answer your question about the uh, same construction that we use on that, uh, all of that is in uh, textiles and clothing. How much time would you say, Your Grace? Um, is it from start to finish to complete a hurdle for you? Uh, let's see. Yeah, for, for the, you mean after I have the pattern or the pattern making the pattern itself? Pattern and then completion. Well, once I have the pattern, then. Um, you know, it's just, it, it's laid out dress by dress, but um, I can tell you when I did the fitting for Veronique at um, Romeo birthday uh, in Thousand Eyes uh, in November, um, it, it took me all day, but I got, um, and I was showing Gina how to do this, um, and we completed, like from scratch, completed a pattern and cut out a prototype dress for her in in that day so i was pretty happy with that honestly
It, all, it was also convenient to, I don't know, I, I'm sorry, as, as, Facebook has messed up all our SEA names. I don't know Gina's SEA name. Um, but, uh, you know, she's she did Penelope's dress that Penelope stepped up in for her pelican. Uh, so she definitely knows costuming and pattern, pattern drafting. So it was really convenient that I didn't have to, like, teach her how to do pattern drafting necessarily. And a lot of the people that are your grace, your excellency. Um, That's of, removed, he's talking about. Um, oh, did you put a picture of it? No, uh, Gina's name is Ramut. Oh, okay. There you go. Um, yeah, so it's, it, it was really handy being able to show her this particular method and not having to, like, bring her up to speed from scratch, as, as it were. So that was, that was pretty handy. So, so I was able to show her how to do this, and uh, now she's got plans to... Uh, start teaching other people how to do this, which makes it really handy for me so that I don't, uh, I mean, as much as I love doing this, uh, it's a lot more convenient to have somebody else up in the north that can teach people how to do this. The whole teaching thing I'm somewhat of a fan of. So yeah, I was able to do that dress start to finish in a day. And then when you're sewing it, you, for her graces, you hand sew all her seams and stuff, correct? Like uh, you, I, hand, you hand I, finish it. I hand finish, yeah. Okay. I often do uh, I often do machine construction with uh, hand finished seams. Um, that's something I got from uh, my good friend Goulinet up in Ontario. The thing that the kind of standard that she taught me on that is uh, no visible machine construction. So that's that's one of those those things that kind of sticks in my head with you know how how much do you uh, how, how, to what extent do you want to do you want to do this so yeah that's that's kind of one of those measures I use no visible seam construction or no visible machine construction. And again, I'm not sure how much of this you can see, but I'm still still going through and uh, cleaning up these corners because uh, this is one of the getting the corners is one of the the harder parts about this and the more time consuming parts because you know it, it needs to it needs to follow as closely uh, to the original pattern um, as as possible, and some of that again is is some composite where you're kind of ballparking where that corner is going to be you measure out as best you can um but um it's so like i've got doo -doo 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 -doo. so i've got this corner here out to here got that one there i went ahead and finished that up there and you can see once you start putting the seam allowance in there the pattern ends up being quite a bit bigger but again i think it's going to just follow these lines when we get all this seam allowance done in there so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do kind of like I did here. I'm going to kind of, especially on the curves here. Oops, let me turn the camera again. Uh, okay. So on these curves here, um, because I don't really have a, a straight line to mark off of, I'm going to kind of, like I'll take one here and then, you know, take another one up here and try to, I'm going to match the seam gauge right to the edge of it. And, and I'm going to and, and eventually just kind of make these kind of dotted lines like I have over here uh, to, to, to hit those curves. I'm going to cheat and do this, uh, do this straight edge on the bottom first because it's easy. I'm still doing the same kind of thing where I'm just kind of doing hash marks and then I'll fill in that line up afterwards.
More of the boring quiet part. Okay. So, as you can see. Okay. So you see I've got those dotted lines in there. Going all around the edges here. And uh, so now I just, I just turn that off. When I do, please tell me I didn't just exit out. Did I just exit out? Sure. Hey, we're back. Okay. So I've got all those, uh, got those dotted lines um, for those curves, and now I just, uh, just connect the dots. Um, but to answer your question, Your Grace, on how long it takes me to finish a dress, again, once I have the pattern, um, then I can just, you know, it takes as long as it does. Um, last time I checked, um, doing a full dress, including flat, flat felled seams, um, kind of taking my time, I can do that uh, within about a two-week time frame. Um, the construction goes pretty quick, obviously, with the machine, um, but the flat felt seams can, can take some time, but I can usually get that done in about two weeks. And again, that's kind of taking my time doing it. That's not, that's not eight hours a day. That's, that's going to be watching a movie here and there and, and you know, finishing a, finishing a seam here and there. But uh, it's really hard for me to just sit down and bang out the flat felt seams for a whole dress in a day. Samaya has no idea that what I'm talking about. That would be terrible. <laughs> yeah, Samaya has no idea what I'm talking about. No, not at all. <laughs> all right. So again, unless you have any questions, you guys are gonna have to suffer in silence for a second while I kind of do the boring part here. So I'm doing the what's your, doing sorry, the what's your go ahead. What's your favorite dress or uh, curdle you've made before? Um, uh, I mean, I, uh, you know, any of them that I've made for my wife, um, which is kind of how I, I got started into this. Uh, you know, I was doing some basic level costuming at some point, and then one day my wife decided that she wanted to try something a little more European she'd done uh, Middle Eastern for a long time and she was making her own stuff there because that's something I just hadn't really gotten into. Um, and one day she said, I want to coat, I want to coat her D. And I said, yes, ma'am. Uh, and so I had, uh, I brought in a, a friend of mine, Countess Mariana from uh, Aidenvelt, um, who is a Laurel 
um, and she specializes in 14th century costuming. And uh, she's every every time I would try to do this on my own, you know, I remember calling her up one time. I'm like, this just isn't working. And she said, oh, just pull it right here. And I pulled it right here, and and it was you know magically worked. And so we uh, flew her in for a weekend, and we did a pattern. Uh, she showed me how to do this, and I've been kicking them out ever since. Um, so yeah, any of the dresses that I've that I've made for my wife, um, you know, uh, in the interest of full disclosure. Um, the rain we had in 2012, um, I had made a new pattern for her, and um, I guess I made that red dress. Yeah, I made a I made a red like uh, what was the name of that color? It's like a candy apple red, um, and we put some of her wolf heads on it. So I made that one. Um, but uh, all the other dresses that we had, all, uh, her outfits and mine. We had, um, Allegretta was our wardrobe coordinator for that rain. And so her and I know Michelle Harris uh, worked on uh, Nisa's coronation uh, dress. Um, she had a whole team of people that, that she was working with. So there were a lot of those dresses um, from that time period that it was off of my pattern, but somebody else had actually done the construction. Um, but another thing I love about being able to do this is, and I, I may mention this in the video, I'm not sure, but, um, you know, there, there, there are plenty of body image issues uh, in our modern world. And being able to give a woman a dress based on period methods that makes her feel good, makes her feel sexy, um, that's, that's, the huge, that's the payoff. For me is being able to, to, to give these give somebody a pattern that they can they can make a dress that they just feel good in um that's 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 the payoff so having done a number of these having having seen people make dresses off of these patterns having them look good having them fit well and and seeing that people feel good in the dress that they that they're wearing that's you yeah, asked my favorite it's i'd have to say all of them i guess um I know uh, Remote, uh, Gina was telling me that when she, so she finished up the dress for, the coronation dress for Veronique right before uh, pandemic hit. And apparently she put the dress on Veronique and, uh, and Darcy did one of those, damn, I look good. Um, so that's, that's the payoff, totally. Feels good. Okay, I have two questions. One is the fabric that you're using, the stripes. Did you say what it was? Because I was talking over you before. Okay. And the second thing is what is your pencil that you're using again? Because I don't know that you've actually said what it was for sure. Uh, it is a quilting pencil, uh, or it can be found in the quilting section of uh, Joann's. Okay. Um, uh, I don't, I don't know a better name for it, um, but it comes with, uh, comes with several different colors of chalk, um, including a bunch of uh, white. Uh, it's like half white, and then there's several other colors that it that it comes with. Um, and I want to say it's like twenty dollars for the pen uh, at Joann's, but if you use your forty or fifty percent off coupon, all of a sudden it's a ten dollar pencil. I've got two of these at least. Um, again, you know, it's, it's got a retractable lead in there and I'm running out of this one, but, um, so yeah, it's, it's, a uh, it, it's, it's in the quilting section. Uh, that's all I can tell you, but, um, this is the best chalk pencil that, that I've ever used. Um, and ideally I won't use, uh, anything else. Um, the fabric that I'm using is, it's a cotton, it's a heavier cotton. Um, you know, it, 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 it needs to be something that is heavy enough um, that when you lay it out on, on the linen, that it's going to have some substance to it. So it doesn't just kind of fly away and it doesn't, if it's too light, um, like the, the, even the linen that I'm using here to do this, um, it's light enough that it kind of shifts a little bit, but the cotton gives you a little more st structural stability, if you will, um, to, um, to, to lay properly, to be able to, to, to put the pattern on or to, to be able to cut the dress out. And okay. that's, 
Yes. Is that a Fonz and Porter pin? Fonz pencil? and Porter, uh, I don't know. It doesn't say on your pencil? No, no, it doesn't okay. have like a, okay. it doesn't have like a brand name or anything. So. I think it's made by Dritz. I had one for a while. Could be. Love it. Love this pencil. <laughs> yeah, I love mine. I just wish I could find it again. <laughs> it's, it's Joanne's. Yeah, uh, it's, I have to get one. Yep. And yeah, definitely use, uh, you know, you get on their mailing list and they'll send you, you know, 40% off coupon every other week. So or hit them on, hit them on sale. Cause they are kind of pricey if you pay full price for them. Um, but, uh, I mean, it's so totally worth it. And let's not forget the unsung hero of this whole project, the dollar and a half seam gauge. Your Grace, this is Catherine Ann. Yes. I, your, your bendy um, measuring stick there, I have an 18 inch one. Where'd you get your, you, like a three foot one? Uh, Amazon. Okay. Yep, it's a uh, three foot, yep, 36 inches right at. Um, yeah, I got it on Amazon. Uh, uh, I can probably send you a link uh, later from, from my orders there, but if you do, um, I, I want to say I did a search on Amazon for like uh, flexible, uh, maybe like flexible tailoring uh, measure tool thingy to Bob. I don't know. Yeah, um, I have, I've had my 18 inch for about 10 years. And so yeah. when I saw your three foot, it was like, okay, I need one of those. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that gives me a straight with the, with the, um, with the arm side, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll take the two measurements off the front and the back. You know, but the total on that is probably going to be close to 24 inches. Um, and when I do the curve on the uh, sleeve head, that's where that's really going to come into play. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So I am almost done uh, with the, the, the body patterns here. Um, it is a quarter after three. Um, so I might be running just a tad bit late on this, but. Um, I'll try to get the, the sleeve pattern shouldn't take too long, but, um, I am going to take a quick potty break here in just a second. So if anybody, um, needs to do the same, this is probably a good time to do that. Um, and, uh, it's going to have to be less than five minutes because we got to kind of get through some of this. Um, so if you need to go, now's a good time to do that. <clears throat> and we are going to be doing the, uh, sleeve. Uh, pattern next and I should be able to get that done uh, in time for us to be done with class. Marguerite, do we have any classes after this in this um, room? I am not. There is um, the apprentice um, artisan meetup uh, at four. So right. we'll, be, so I, we'll be having to close out by then. Bit, if I go over a little bit, it's going to be okay. Uh, I mean, I might be able to make somebody else a host, but is that is that in this room? No, it's in another room, but it's I'm I'm hosting it. I'm okay. the person hosting it, not the Zoom hosting it. But okay, yeah, I think I think uh, you can leave the meeting and and just leave the meeting. Yeah, it might end up holding the recording, but we'll see what happens. Okay. And I'll pause it while we take our break. Ash, okay. you, you can make me the host at the end if you need to. Oh, okay, cool. And yeah, I should be able to get done with the sleep pattern before we, before I run out of time, before four o'clock. But if I run over just a little bit there. All right. Okay, so now that I got all the lines on, including seam allowance and all that, um, I'm gonna take uh, some final measurements on the side seam and the, Oh yeah, six and a half. Nice. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna take some final measurements on the side seam and the shoulder seams because uh, it's you know neat and all. Ooh, that's that's six and a half. So on the side seams here, I got six and a half and one. I got it seven on the other. So uh, 
that a little bit. Yeah, that's about right. Okay, so this is why I measure before we cut. Um, on the shoulder seam up here, on the front, I got four and a quarter. And on the back, I've got three and three quarters. So I'm about a half inch off. So I think I am going to so I'm going to cut that off on the, the front side. Because again, these, uh, these measurements, once we get the seam allowance in, hitting those corners sometimes um, can be kind of, kind of tricky because you're, you're trying to make a corner off of, um, like off the pattern. And there's not really a straight line for you to, to hit on that. So since it ended up being a little bit bigger on the front, I'm gonna go ahead and cut that off on there. And I will, and again, because this is, you know, it's seam allowance and it's happening right at the top of the, right at the top of the shoulder. Um, I've got a little, little margin of error that, that I should, it should work just fine. Again, it's really important to have those shoulder seams at the at the top matching. So pattern for back piece. Like I ended up cutting that a little too much into the pattern. I'll have to fix that later.
and that is pattern for the front. So we got the front and the back pattern. Uh, we take a quick break. Uh, we'll be back right at three thirty. So if you guys need a potty break, now's a good time to do that. All right, I'm pausing the recording now. Okay. All right, so we're back. Um, so for the sleeve pattern, um, when I do the body, I do it out of linen because nothing moves the way the linen does, and it's got to fit the body a little bit better. I can actually do the the the, the sleeve pattern for the most part out of uh, out of cotton uh, because it's not it's not quite as as fitted as the um, as the rest of the body is, um, and you know linen being you know still more than ten dollars a yard. Um, we we'll try to try to spare some of that. Typically, when I put this, when I do a sleeve with the, when I'm making a sleeve with linen, I will cut that sleeve on the bias, um, because again, the way that that linen moves, when we put it on the bias, it allows for um, the various directions that, that your arm moves or if you kind of put it on a straight grain when you move your arm uh, in different ways it's going to bind up a little bit putting it on the bias kind of gives it a little, little bit more freedom of, of motion to do that but for the drafting itself i can just i can do it um just on the on the straight grain and again this is just this is super lightweight cotton uh, that i'm doing this with so it's nothing nothing special um but sleeve head measurement or the Creating a sleeve head. It's pretty uh, pretty clever, I think. Okay. So in period, the um, the seam for the sleeve, um, the seams did not match under the armpit. The seam actually kind of comes down the back side of the arm. And the reason for that is what you're gonna see here in a second as we take the, the, the sleeve head in the arm's eye. I'm gonna, the curve that I'm gonna draw out is gonna end up being this S curve. Um, so as opposed to uh, having a smaller curve, having, having a big curve in the middle for where the, where the shoulder, or, uh, the top of the shoulder, um, it's actually gonna be more of an, a, an S curve. Um, so I'm gonna try to draw it this way to give you an idea about how that goes. So the first thing we need to do for the sleeve is we need to know what the sleeve head, the arm's eye measurement is going to be. <clears throat> I already know that the length of the sleeve that I'm looking for is about 24 inches and I don't know if I'm going to do the final fitting on this because the wife is kind of occupied with some other stuff right now um, <clears throat> but um, the drafting of the sleeve head you're going to see how I do that and that's the really important part about this so the first thing we need to do is take the um, the measurements for the for this for the arms eye and again we have the Seam allowance already built into this, so I'm just measuring what these what these two are, and using the flex ruler to do that. This is again where this comes in super super handy. So for the back piece, I've got 10 inches. And for the front pattern, I have 13 inches. So we're looking at a total of 23 inches for the uh, sleeve head. Now, the way the curves work, if I was to take that 23 inches, and if I were to just do a straight line at 23 inches, um, when you when you add the the curve in the even the top and the bottom, that line ends up being longer than the 23 inches that we need. The 23 inches that we need for the sleeve head is the entire curvature of that line, as opposed to a, a straight line here. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm, this is one of those things that kind of. I'm gonna ballpark this just a little bit um, to figure out how much I'm cutting off because I need to make the total width of it needs to be shorter than the uh, total sleeve head measurement. So at uh, 23 inches worth of sleeve head, 
I can cut out about three inches. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna make the total width of it um, twenty inches. And again, it's gonna have to be the total length of it is uh, twenty four inches. So I've got plenty of room down here to to, to work with that. So I'm just gonna kind of line this up with the top edge and. Give myself 20 inches. Okay. So um, this is one of those modifications that I made recently as far as how I how I do this. I had kind of drawn out the, the basic shape of the sleeve before until I realized that that was just a lot more work than it has to be. So starting with that line, which I've got at 20 inches. Okay. So now I'm going to take uh, and Hit the center point of that right at 10 inches. Okay. Um, so from the center point of the sleeve, I'm going to find the center, uh, basically the quarter points on that as well. So I'm going to make a mark at five inches and make a mark at 15 inches because this is going to be that center point is that's going to be the center of the, the curvature of the sleeve. Um, and so it's going to basically it's going to curve up on the one side and then it's going to curve down on the other side and it's going to run the, the full length of of that half and that curve is going to come right through the halfway point on the on the sleeve um, <clears throat> you can move that that center point where the, to one way or the other to, to make the top side of the, the sleeve have a little bit bigger if you want to but today i'm just doing just the just the basics okay um, because there is a difference in, there is a slight difference in the length of uh, the length of the arm side going over the shoulder as opposed to under the armpit. But you can do it with just a just the straight measurements, and I'm going to do that for ease of um, use. So with the so I cut out three inches in the total length of this. So I'm basically putting that back in, and I'm putting it in top and bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the halfway point on uh, for the top side, and I'm going to add three inches. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing on the halfway point on the bottom side. Add three inches there as well. Okay. So. Oops. I don't need to give everybody where to go with this. Okay, so we have the center point here. We've got the halfway point here. This is going to be the top of the sleeve head. That's going to curve up this way, and then this one over here is the bottom of it. And the curve that I'm looking for this is going to start up here. It's going to go to the top of there. It's going to come through the middle there. It's going to hit the the bottom point there, and then end up up here. So I'm going, to, I'm going to draw that out, and then we're going to measure that with the with the curved ruler, and we're going to see how close we get to that. I know it's going to be close, but I know I'm going to have to kind of composite this out as, as well as just kind of cut it out so that it, it gets to be as exact as it can. Okay. So basically at this point, it looks like your classic sine wave, right? So I'm going to measure that out and see how good I am.
Aha! 24 inches. Very close. So now we're going to cut out, uh, we're, to kind of keep it symmetrical, we're going to cut, cut out a little bit on the top and a little bit on the bottom. Uh, so I'm basically just going to take most of that line that I have and I'm just going to kind of shallow out um, this line by maybe maybe quarter inch, maybe half inch. I'm going to go half inch. Yep, didn't cut out quite enough. And this can be kind of the tricky part about the sleeve head, but but using those measurements there, it's gonna get you really, really close. And then you just kind of take a couple measurements at it to bring it down. And again, this is just a, just an easy curve, just an S curve that goes to the center point and then comes to the center point of the top and bottom. And that is right at 23 inches. So, so this lower line right here, come right through there, coming back through there. That's the one I've got right there. Okay. Any questions so far? All right. Perfect. Okay. So next thing I'm gonna do. Um, so the sleeve head measurement that I took, or the sleeve length measurement that I took was from the, the from the shoulder cap, which is gonna be this, this top part right here. Um, and that was 24 inches. So I'm gonna line this up. Let's see, top of that is about two and a quarter inches there. So I'm going to make that, uh, yeah, two and a quarter inches at the, uh, so as I'm starting, as I'm lining this right up here, I'm lining this up so that the, the sleeve length measurement that I'm taking isn't from the center line, it's from the, the top of the sleeve head. So it's gonna be from there to there, but I wanna, I wanna measure it on this center line. So I'm just gonna take this and from here, just gonna measure 24 inches down there. Um, and then that will give me the hand cuff measurement and then I do the, uh, this, wrist measurement from there. So, oh yeah. Conveniently enough, this is a 24 inch quilting ruler. It does need to be a little bit more straight. So. Okay. And let me double check measurements for the wrist. So uh, where we have the seam allowance built into the seam, the sleeve head, this measurement here, we don't need to add it there. Uh, but when we finish the pattern, we are gonna need to add that seam allowance on the, on the side seams because it hasn't been, been calculated in yet. So we're looking at a, a 10 inch uh, wrist measurement for her. Uh, so um, I'm going to give it a total of 11, give a half inch seam allowance on, on either side. Um, 
actually, I'm going to go just a little more because uh, give that, give, eh, no, I'm just going to do half inch uh, seam allowance on this. Because um, typically with the, with the code RD, I'm um, going over it. A lot, a lot of times I do a, a short sleeve code RD so you can see the under sleeve uh, on the, on the other one. So I'm just going to go make this, uh, what, five and a half to give me that uh, 11 inches across for the seam allowance. Okay. And then so uh, so I did a straight line from the from the top of the sleeve head down to where the length of the sleeve is going to be right here. Uh, now I have the wrist measurement right here with a little bit of seam allowance on there. So now what I'm doing is I'm just drawing a straight line from the the end of there to uh, from the end of the wrist measurement to the to the width of the uh, um, sleeve head. Now this is not the not the end of this, but again I don't know that I'm going to be able to uh, to to fully do this because um, the wife is not available right now. But I'll explain what we do with this. And terrible lighting. Can you guys see that okay? Okay, so sleeve head here, uh, the wrist measurement here, and then the length of it here. So at this point, usually what I do is um, like I said, I, I, I don't think I'm going to be able to. Uh, to fully finish uh, this part, but I'm gonna explain uh, what I do. So at this point, what I do, I'm gonna cut this out, and I'm gonna sew it up with a half inch uh, seam allowance. Uh, then I'm gonna, I will put it on, on her arm just and pin it right where the, um, just usually just pin it to your shirt sleeve, right where, um, and again, it's gonna be, um, it's not at the shoulder point here, it's at the top of the, it's inset in the shoulder, so it kind of caps over the, the shoulder there. So I'm gonna take that measurement from, I'm gonna pin it right here at the top. Um, I'm not gonna make any changes to the sleeve head because that has to match the, the body pattern. But from here, um, what I'll do is, is I'll, I'll pin it um, uh, down, to the, down to the wrist at something that is fit but comfortable. Um, it's not going to be restrictive. It's not going to be quite as much second skin as the, as the body part is because um, as you move your arm, your forearm is going to flex and you want to make sure that you have room in there for, for that to move. Your, your elbow is going to, is going to stretch the, the material differently as well. So you want to make sure that you have plenty of room in there. So I'm going to, I'll pin it under, under the arm here at the, at the seam. And again, that seam is going to be going right down the, right down the back here. Um, I might be able to just cut this out and do it on me. But, um, so yeah, the seam comes down down the back here, so, and the, 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 the seam is gonna come follow this line on your forearm. If you're doing, uh, if you're doing buttons on the sleeves right here, typically this is gonna start at the elbow and you do buttons right on down in here. Um, it was done in period where you could, if you really wanna go for all the marbles, you can do buttons all the way up into the armpit if you want, if you want to close it out that way. Um, it's a lot of work, obviously, uh, but it, it's something you can do. Um, so yeah, just pin it, pin it up there, and then um, you'll, you'll draw, using the chalk pencil, once it's pinned in place, you're gonna draw a line along where those pin lines are. Um, that's gonna, and you're gonna have to do both sides of that seam, so that when you lay it out again, um, you can, again, you make a composite like we did uh, before, and, um, and, and that will give you the actual fit for the sleeve that you need. Because right now, as wide as this is, I mean, these are basically just straight lines on a, you know, on an angle, and your arm is not at all built that way. Um, so you'll have to put the sleeve on, pin it up, and uh, taper it in there. And then, again, once you draw those lines on there and you make those straight, that is what the finished pattern is going to look like. So you will need to add the seam allowance uh, to that as well. 
you could do the half inch, you could do five eighths, uh, five eighths inch on there uh, with whatever you're, you're comfortable with uh, doing on there. Um, I mean, that's an eighth of a diff difference on, on one sleeve. So a total of a quarter inch uh, difference. Um, so, and the Coder D, if you do a full length, a full sleeve on the Coder D, it'll probably fit reasonably well uh, under there anyway. Um, uh, the only thing about that is when you're doing, you pinned it up and you drew the lines on, you're doing that composite. When you get up here, so so your 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 sleeve line is more likely going to kind of follow something like this. It's going to kind of curve in here a little bit and then curve out a little bit more. When you get to this top part up here, you have to make sure that you're adding seam allowance in here, but you don't want too much seam allowance here because you already have the seam allowance that you need at the top here. So as as you finish off that seam, usually uh, when I get when, when when the fitting gets up to about where the bicep is or the tricep is, um, you, you're gonna you're gonna just kind of fade fade this out a little bit to kind of let it just uh, take that that full that full seam up up the back there. That's gonna give you the room that you need to um, to to move around in afterwards. And then this lower part is gonna be is gonna be fit because it's the, really the forearm and the elbow that you're doing a fitting for uh, on this. I keep showing you as if you're seeing the same thing I'm seeing. So yeah, the forearm, the elbow, that's that's the part that you uh, need to fit to give yourself a good fit, a close fit, but still give you enough room uh, to actually move. Um, so, and then, uh, yeah, once you do that, you just, uh, yeah, you can just um, add, yeah, add in that seam allowance and then transfer it to uh, whatever pattern fabric you're using. So, I think that's uh, about all we're going to have time for today. Uh, so let me throw it out there and, and see if there's any last minute questions. All right, and I'm not seeing anything else in the chat. So thanks so much for doing that class, Sean. Right on, my pleasure. Um, and I know it's kind of hard to, I can just give you a gist of it. Um, and it's a lot easier to show you how to do it in, in person, obviously, but hopefully this gives you an idea about what that yeah. process is. And there will be, again, a class forthcoming um, on, um, on, on actually cutting out the dress off of the, the pattern. Uh, so I can kind of show you where we're going from there. Sounds good. All right. Are you ready to stop the recording? I am, yeah. Thanks All for right. joining me. Thanks for.